Have you played Darkest Dungeon yet? Whether your answer is yes or no, you should be playing Darkest Dungeon right now. Or after this video, whatever. I honestly think that Darkest Dungeon is the most interesting game I've played in a long time. There's a lot of stuff happening here, a lot of contributions from various genres, and thankfully they all add up to more than the sum of their parts. It's part roguelike, part dungeon crawler, part JRPG, part tactics RPG. It's hard to believe this game could be as focused as it is, and let me tell you, it gets a lot done. The premise of the game has the player assembling and cultivating a roster of heroes to go on expeditions into the haunted lands surrounding your family's now ruined estate. Each mission is procedurally generated, your heroes are randomized as you hire them, and battle is not unlike the classic turn-based combat of all of our favorite JRPGs. The awesome twist in this game that has everyone a chimmerin' and a chamarin' are the stress meter and the psychological quirks. Basically, the more often you send your characters into the dungeon, the more likely they are to emerge with mental traumas or physical illnesses that reduce their stats or change the way they interact with each other or the game. If there's two genres I love, it's roguelikes and JRPGs, and an awesome twist like the stresses and quirks just sweetens the deal, so we have a hat trick on our hands. If you follow my channel, you know by now that one of my other favorite genres is survival horror, and I think the jury is still officially out on whether or not Darkest dungeon counts as a survival horror game. I mean, the Steam tags don't have horror listed until way down the bottom of the list, and survival isn't even on the list. But these days, survival horror has become so much of a ubiquitous term that I think what gets designated as such has kind of been obscured in a lot of ways. The genre of horror games in general has grown so much over the years that there are a lot of loose definitions floating around. One thing we can all agree on, however, is that horror definitely gets used as a blanket term to cover a lot of ground at once. There's your true blue horror games, your oh man I can't believe they went there scary games, and your bleh for the sake of bleh games that all have their own techniques and methods of evoking emotional responses that we might describe as uncomfortable. They all have a common denominator, fear, dread, apprehension in one form or another, and thus we call them horror games as a shorthand. There are similarities there, but it's a lot like comparing Metallica, OSI, Stradivarius, and however the hell you're supposed to pronounce that. These are all heavy metal bands, but what connects them? Distorted guitars? Unorthodox song structures? Radio listeners find them challenging and scary? Yes, all of those things are true, but to compare them by sound? Those commonalities would be almost meaningless. In much the same way, horror is a term that we are using to reach quite far these days. It's defined as an intense, painful emotion of fear or repugnance. That can mean a lot of things, and that's more or less what we're using it for, such as the dread of spending another damnable night in this accursed pizzeria, or the dread of ever being in the same room as Lisa Trevor again, or the dread of an introspection that could lead to whatever human darkness created Pyramid Head. Despite the rift between how meaningful these experiences may or may not be, the effect is more or less the same. We are scared of what is going to happen to us, these avatars that we place in the game. Without them, we wouldn't be playing a video game, we'd have to go outside or something! Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, we experience fear at um, this prospect. I suppose. This is where Darkest Dungeon deviates, or departs entirely, and yet I feel like it's among the most deserving of the title of survival horror. I mean, survival is definitely on the menu for this game, despite what the Steam tags will tell ya. I mean, you have to make it to the end of your quests in the various dungeons, whether the challenges and the stresses of the horrors around you, duh. But even when you're safe at home, there's a big element of needing to persevere. Resources, such as money that you use to take care of your troops that can run dry if you're not careful. Survival is very much a challenge when it comes to this game. I say it even captures the desperation other survival horror games long to achieve. And as for the horror element, well, that should be obvious, but perhaps it's not. Now, I will admit that what is here is more or less a dark fantasy motif rather than the kind of aesthetic we might be expecting. I mean, what we see in this game isn't really scary, you know, not like this, or this, or this. Man, classic Resident Evil, got it going on. What's here is all borrowed from the uncanny, or classic horror iconography, sure. But I think what makes Darkest Dungeon the most frightening is its psychology, and I'm not talking about the quirks. Although those are pretty awesome too. One of the most effective ways to ramp up suspense during a gaming experience is to employ a tenuous balance of risk versus reward. Objectives and goals are hidden on the other side of challenges or dangers, becoming most effective when those objectives are optional. The player must then decide if the risk of a failure state is worth the few extra points, coins, relics, whatever else have yous. Now, in most games in general, the arrival of a failure state is a simple reload and play. It's a reward at the cost of a risk, sure, but the risk is kind of more of an aw oh man, it kinda sucks. With Darkest Dungeon, there is no trying again. Characters die, resources get lost forever. You can't even Fire Emblem restart your way out of this because there's no save to load. I even tried Alt F4ing the game once and it brought me right back to where I Alt F4ed. How, how'd you do that?
This game takes risk versus reward to a whole new level. The rewards in Darkest Dungeon are real. They aren't just trophies you feel good about as you go on. You need these relics. You need this gold. Without it, the game can't continue, but oh boy if the risk isn't right there on its heels. The consequences for failing the risk have long-lasting effects in this game. Character suffered a lot of stress in the quest? Throw money at the problem. Debilitating quirk or disease? You gotta pony up that cash for the treatment. Character dead? Well, you gotta choose a new one, and then you gotta level them up and customize their skills, costing you resources. Even just going on a mission, you have to finance it properly in order for it to go well to prevent these horrible things from happening in the first place so that you don't have to spend money before spending money on going on a quest. You can see where this is becoming kind of a thing. And it's kind of amazing how volatile any quest can be. Critical hits are common, status effects are a real threat, and your characters are just as likely to whiff their attacks than your opponents. Sometimes it seems like more likely, but whatever. I mean, I spent an entire camping session healing my party, reducing their stress, and making sure I didn't get snuck up on, only to get snuck up on, and over the course of a single battle, wound up in this condition. This game is not fooling around! With all of these possibilities weighing down on us, it's almost impossible not to be frightened venturing out into the dark unknown all over again. The game might not be blaring at you all over the place, but when you're walking down a dark dungeon corridor, no scouting instance on the map, and suddenly this happens, Surprise! Potentially catastrophic implications on your continued progress through the game! It's kind of almost worse than a regular jump scare. And what I think makes Darkest Dungeon just that bit more powerful is that it's almost as though we're scared for other people while playing this game. Usually we're playing as a singular protagonist, avatar, or even ourselves, but in Darkest Dungeon the well-being and continued existence of our troops is our first and foremost concern. On some level, we are almost simulating concern for others every time we dread sending them back out into the dungeons. It actually brings up recollections of experiences I've had playing Fire Emblem or Valkyria Chronicles. Games that, whether by writing or mechanics, have a roster of unique and varied characters that you send into battle and are then responsible for during the event. I mean, Valkyria Chronicles has a quirk system of its own that's handled slightly differently, but applied to a set of uniquely designed characters, which really helps them feel like individuals, even if only very few of them are involved in the story. Tactics RPGs have a really nasty habit of getting me really attached to the characters in my squads, and I'm sending these people into battle. Now these games aren't necessarily scary, in fact I would posit that they are pretty much the opposite, but I often wonder if horror needs to be scary to be accomplished. I think the two go hand in hand nicely for sure, but if we're thinking of horror as an objective, like creating that sense of fear, dread, or anxiety, that could come from other places too, right? For a person like me who recognizes and accepts permadeath, there is often a twinge of anxiety or worry every time I send these unique and carefully constructed characters into battle. I usually come out okay in the end, but there's always that one time when something goes wrong that means I don't have that character or unit in the future. That my endearment to that character, whatever it might be, is brought to an end because of the mistakes that I made. Every time I made a risky move, the dread of the consequences of my carelessness becomes a facsimile of horror in its own way. Darkest Dungeon, on the other hand, plays into this so well that the game has had me just about paralyzed by indecision brought on by the fear for the well-being of my questing party. Coming up to the end of a quest I ran not too long ago, my team is tired and pretty dang close to death. I am one room away from completing the mission, and I have not had a scouting instance that covered this corridor. Without scouting, traps and battles spring up without warning, becoming jump scares in their own right with lasting effects to boot. We've already seen tense battle situations that left us limping like this in the first place, who's to say we won't find something worse. What if my characters die? We could abandon, of course. We could go back home to safety, but would we break even on this quest? Will I be able to treat my units back home and properly supply another quest after this? What if this is the beginning of the downward spiral that ends this legacy? Darkest Dungeon does not stop at messing with the psychology of the characters. If you're not careful, it will dig itself right into your brain and, well, let's just say I wasn't careful. While not everyone will agree with me outright, I think Darkest Dungeon did something remarkable in turning what essentially is a customizable adventure game into a psychologically frightening experience, turning jump scare random battles into the dread of desperate fights for survival and the uncertainty of progression into its greatest weapon, making the fear a mechanical experience rather than an aesthetic one. It's not about bone-chilling moments that pass by and fade away when the scene is over, everything that happens has meaning and weight to it, which is the scariest thought of all. I often think of narrative-based games as almost being trapped within themselves, as though all of the stakes and risks are pointing at getting the player to the goal eventually. And that's not a bad thing, pretty much all of my favorite games are that. But Darkest Dungeon seems to be reaching beyond the screen, putting the weight of the decisions into the mind of the player, making sure that the depth of the consequences of their choices gets put on them, affecting its audience almost as much as its characters. All of that and the game is just 
really good. Like I said before, you should play it. You should play it, because it's good. It's really good. All right, later.